Okay, welcome to lesson 2.4 on understanding numbers. Today we're going to look at what are called prime and composite numbers and how to identify them. So uh, you're going to need a block uh, or a set of 72 small cubes if you have them. If not, you can actually just use a grid paper uh, like uh, graph paper which has boxes in it. So first thing is, does anyone remember what a factor is? Well, a factor is a number which when you divide it into another number, you get a whole number result. So another way of looking at this is that a factor is uh, a factor of a number is in that number's times tables. Or another way would be if you skip count by that number, you will hit the big number. Okay. So let's take a look at an example here just to help you understand this. All right. So if we talk about the factors of six, we know that the numbers that divide evenly into six are one because six divided by one is six, two, six divided by two is three. 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 6 because 6 divided by 6 is 1. They all divide evenly into 6. The other thing you can do here is that you should notice that 1 times 6 is 6 and 2 times 3 is 6. So if you can make a rectangle which has even, sorry, which has sides which are whole numbers, those two numbers which make the rectangle are factors of it. So for example, if you take a look at here, 1 times 6 is 6, and if you go down here, you'll notice that I can make a, uh, sorry, got the wrong one there, okay? I'll, go, I'll do the rectangles later, okay? So here, here are your two numbers. Factors of 6 are 1 and 6, and the factors of 6 on the right-hand side are 2 and 3. You'll notice that I always do them in pairs, and there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. So we, if you take out the small blocks, let's start with uh, the number 2, okay? And I kind of messed it up here, so... I want you to arrange them on your desk, and I want you to take and or draw uh, the rectangles that you can make out of two squares, okay, or two of the small cubes. And you should have noticed that there's two ways of doing this, and only two, well, besides one way of doing it, but you, you, the other way is turning it. You'll notice that you could have done it this way, and you could have done it that way, and you may think, oh, that means there's two. But the reality is that if you just take this and spin it 90 degrees, you'll get this one. So th this one here and this one here are the same thing. They're both 1 by 2. You see the 1 by 2 here. So there's only one way of doing this. So the number 2 only has two factors, 1 and 2. Okay? Now let's go to the next number. What about the number, um, find the factors uh, of, so I guess we've done this here, the factors of 1. I kind of got ahead of myself there, got mixed up, but that's okay. So the factors of, of 2 are 1 and 2 because you can only draw the rectangle in one way, and that's a 1 by 2. Now you could say it's 2 by 1, but that's still a 1 and a 2, so the factors of 2 are 1 and 2. Note that this number 2 only has two factors, 1 and itself. Let's try 4. Take out four blocks or get on your paper, and I want you to draw as many ways that you can make a rectangle out of four squares. So pause the recording and do that. Okay, well you should have noticed that the first way you could have done it is you could have put them all in a row, 1 by 4. You also could make a square by doing 2 by 2. So that means in this situation, we have four blocks. So the factors of 4 are 1 and 4, because 1 times 4 equals 4, and 2 by 2, which gives you 4 also. So the factors of 2 are 1 and 4, and 2 and 2. When you have two of them, uh, which are 2 by 2 here, you only put down 1, 2. You don't put down 2, okay? So these are the factors that we get, 1 and 4, 2 and 2. And that's because 1 times 4, or the area of 1 times 4, gives me an area of 4 here. And the area of this rectangle, 2 by 2, also gives me a 4. So your factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. All right, let's take a look at the factors of 6. I want you to take and make as many rectangles as you can with 6. All right, so pause the recording and do that. All right, so... The way you can do this, well, obviously, is you can go one long, long strip, which has 6 in it. Notice this area is 6, 1 by 6. And the other way you can do it is 2 by 3. Now, you also could have done 3 by 2, or you could have this here standing up 6 by 1. But it's still a 1 and a 6 here and a 2 and a 3 here. So these are your factors of 6, 1 and 6, and 2 and 3. And if you do the multiplication, 1 times 6 is 6, and 2 times 3 is 6. So your factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So far, we're getting it. Okay, the factors of 7. Take out 7 blocks or on your graph paper, draw as many rectangles as you can with the number 7. 
All right, now there's only one way of doing this, and that's one high and seven wide. There's no way you can make a rectangle and have equal, uh, having the sides and the lengths equal. So it's only one by seven. So one and seven are the only two factors of seven. And of course, the area would be one times seven, which is seven. So the factors of seven are one and seven. This is just like our two, where we had one by two. Notice that? Now, the factors of eight. Pause the recording and make all the rectangles you can out of eight. All right, well, the first way, obviously, one long strip of eight. Now, we also can do two high and four long, or if you had four long and two high, that would, sorry, the other way around, that would work too. But the reality is you just have one and eight and two and four. So that means one by eight is eight, and two by four is eight. Notice they multiply. So the factors of your eight is one, two, four, and eight. All right, now, let's have you try 12. So pause the recording and do 12. And there is a reason for all this, trust me. All right, so let's take a look at 12. Well, the obvious one is one long strip of 12. All right, so we've got one by 12, which gives you 12. And then we have two long and six high. Two times six is, high, is uh, 12, two rows of six. And then we have three rows of four, which has also got 12 here. So we have 12 here, 12 there, and 12 there. So when you put them together, one and 12, two and six, three and four, you'll notice that we've got one by 12, or one times 12 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, and 3 times 4 is 12. So that makes my factors of 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Okay, so now we've done a whole bunch of numbers up to 12. You should have noticed when we did 2, 3, 5, and 7 that something strange happened or something unique happened. In each of these situations for 2, 3, 5, and 7, we did 2 and 7, um, you cannot make a rectangle in any other way except for one long strip, okay? These are called prime numbers. And because they only have two factors, that's what makes them prime. Now you notice that this is one by two, so it, this is one by three, one by five, one by seven. So the factors of prime numbers are always one and that number itself. Okay, so the factors of two are one and two. The factors of three are one and three. The factors of five are one and five, and the factors of seven are one and seven. Can you name others? Well, these prime numbers, there's, there's a bunch of them. They go on infinitely. Here are, are a bunch of them that you can take a look at. And you'll notice that if you tried to make rectangles out of all of these numbers up to 37, you wouldn't be able to do it in any other way except for one long strip. Okay? Now, if you'd want to know, just for kicks and giggles here, these are the first, uh, the prime numbers up to 1,000. All right? So there's quite a few here. All right? Now, if you, take, if you want, want to really go and have some fun, you can take a look at a math site. Okay, this is, you can see where it is right here. And uh, this actually will allow you to input a number, and I'll open it up here. Um, you, can open, you can input a number you want, and it'll tell you whether it's prime. So if you want to enter, let's say, uh, one, two, three, seven. All right, you want, is it prime? Just hit that number. Yeah, it's prime, okay? Now, what if I back up and put a six here? All right, look what happens here. Now, it doesn't tell you every single number that's divisible into 1, 2, 3, 6. What it does is it just finds you one other factor. Because the definition of a prime number is only two, one and itself. So 1,236, this has one and, and 1, 2, 3, 6. But if you can find any other number, it won't be prime. Well, this is even. So because it's even, it's divisible by two. So I can prove this is not prime because I can divide it by 2. All even numbers are 2. So this is kind of nice for us because if you want to figure out whether a number is prime or uh, composite, except for the number 2, every even number is composite because 2 goes into it. Okay? And this one here, you can put a lot of big numbers in. Uh, let's, try a, let's try a 7 there. Just for, see how that works. Is this prime? No, it's not. You can find that it's actually divisible by 37. So this is a kind of neat little uh, website for you to take a look at. All right. Now, going on then, what is the difference between prime and composite? So what are the other numbers called that are not prime? I've already told you that. They're called composite numbers. Now, each composite number has to have three or more factors. So if you can find one other factor or one other number that will go into the number you're trying to figure out as prime or composite, if it, you can find one more then it's going to have to be composite. Now, 2 is prime, because the only way you can make rectangles, the only two numbers that go into prime, or sorry, go into 2, are 1 and 2. There's no other way of doing it. 
Now, we know 1 and 6 goes into 6, but we also know that 2 and 3 do. So the fact that we can find one more number means that this has to be composite. Okay? So I'm going to give you a little exercise. I want you to take 26, 37, 84, and 33, and I want you to write down whether you think they're prime or composite. So pause the recording and try to and, uh, figure out which one these are. All right, 26. First thing off, it's even. The moment it's even, you know it's divisible by 2. So we have 1 and 26 and 2. That means that has to be composite. 37 takes a lot of work, but if you actually went to that website, you'll find that 37 is actually prime. Again, 84, even. 2 goes in, has to be composite. Now, 33 is divisible by 1 and 33, but it's also divisible by 3 and 11. So this one is also, oh, that's not supposed to be prime. That's composite. Okay, so there you go. That's a typo right there for me. All right, so this here is supposed to be composite. Ooh. There you go, composite. Compost, even better. Oh, we'll just leave it, compost. Okay, some of you will actually get that. All right, moving on. So, review. Prime numbers only have two factors, one in themselves. Composite numbers have three or more factors. Well, that leaves two numbers that we haven't considered. What about the number zero? Well, if you have zero blocks or zero rectangles, can you make a rectangle? The answer to that is no. You can't make a rectangle. So, zero is one of those numbers which is not prime, nor is it composite. All right? Now, what about one? One, you can make a rectangle out of it, but there's only one factor, one. So therefore, it is also neither prime nor composite. Okay? All right. Let's do some exercises here. Let's see if you can find all the factors for 24. Now, what I'd like you to do this is do them in pairs. Start with 1 and 24, all right? Then check 2 and find its partner. Check 3 until you get down to the very bottom, okay? So pause the recording and see if you can find all the factors of 24. All right, here we go. Now, you'll notice I did them in pairs. 1 times 24 is 24. Then I checked 2. Does 2 go into 24? Well, it's even, so it should. So 24 divided by 2 does give me a 12. Okay, so 2 times 12, 24. So 2 and 12 are both uh, factors of 24. So what about 3? Well, 24 divided by 3 is 8, or you can think of 3 times 8 is 24. So 3 and 8 are factors. Now, you notice there's some numbers here between 8 and 12 and 12 and 24. If you do them in pairs, you don't have to check 13 through 23, nor do you have to check 9 through 11, because we know that their partner would have to be a decimal to be between 1 and 2 and 3 and, and 2 and 3. So let's check 4. Well, 24 divided by 4 is 6, and 4 times 6 is 24, so 6 goes in. So now there's only one number left to check, and that's the number 5. All right. Now, 24 does not end in a 0 or a 5, so a 5 does not go into it. So you notice the next number after 5 is a 6, and we've already done that one. We've got it here with the 6 on the second column here. Now, because we've met, met the 6, that means we're done. There's no other way a number could be between here or it would have to be a decimal here. So when you meet up with the number on the bottom here in pairs, that shows you that you're finished. So the only factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. All right, moving on to the next one. I'd like you to find all the factors of 48. Now do it in, uh, in pairs, all right? So pause the recording and do the factors of, one four, uh, sorry, of 48. Okay, so taking a look at 48, it's even, so you know 2 goes into it. So check 2. Yes, it does. So 2 goes into 48. 2 times 24 is 48. Now check 3. Does 3 go into 48? Well, 48 divided by 3 is 16, so 3 and 16. Now check 4. Does 4 go in? Well, 4 divided into 48 gives me 12, so 4 and 12 work. Check 5. Doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. It doesn't work. So in fact, if you skip count by 5, you'll go 45, 50. You'll skip 48 altogether, so 5 is a no. Check 6. 6 goes into 48 eight times. Now we only got one number left to do, and that's 7, because after 7 comes 8. So check to see if 7 goes into 48. It does not. In fact, 7 times 6 is 42, and 7 times 7 is 49. So 7 does skip 48. So now we've got our list here. We know that 7 doesn't work, and our next number is 8. We know that 8 does go in, so we're now met up with our factor on the bottom, and we know we're done. So the next number is 6, is 8, and since we know that it is a factor with 6, we're done. So here are your factors of 48. 1, 
2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 24, and 48. Okay? Now, let's have you try 40. So pause the recording and get all the factors of 40. All right, well, there we go. Now, this is checking again. 1 and 40, we know every number in itself always work. So check 2. Well, 40 is even, so 2 goes into it. 2 times 20 is 40. Check 3. 40 divided by 3 doesn't, ma doesn't work. It becomes a decimal, so 3 is out. Check 4. 40 divided by 4 is 10, so that works. Check 5. 40 divided by 5 is 8, that works. Now check 6. Well, 40 divided by 6 does not give us a whole number, so it's out. Check 7. 40 divided by 7 does not give me a whole number, so it's out. And you notice the next number I have to check is 8, and I already have it. So my factors are 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, 10, 20, and 40. There are your factors. So, how do you find out if a number is a factor of another number? Well, we have to divide, right? And if the answer, the quotient, is a whole number, it is a factor. So let's take a look at 111 here. Is 111, does, is 3 a factor of it? Well, does 3 go into 111? So you can get your calculator out, and you can go 111 divided by 3, and find out if it's a whole number. And you'll find that, yes, it actually goes in 37 times because 3 times 7 is 111. So 3 is a factor of 11. Let's check 4. So does 4 go into 111? Well, 111 divided by 4 does not give us a whole number. It gives us 27.75. That means that this is 4 is not a factor of 111 because the answer, the quotient, is not a whole number. All right? Moving on. Now, how can you tell if the following are not prime without dividing or using counters? Well, here's a couple of just a little couple of cheats for you to help, maybe uh, so you can understand it. The divisibility rule for numbers that are divisible by five: every single number that five goes into, every every multiple of five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, ends in a five or a zero. Okay, I don't know why it just ends in a five. So if a number ends in a five or a zero, then it is divisible by 5. Now, what about 2, 3, 1, 7, 6, 6? Now this 6 is even. So every number who is even is not prime. It's composite. And 2, 1, 0, 0, if a number ends in 0, it's divisible by 10. So if you see any number that ends in a 0, is even, or ends in a 5 or a 0, then you know that 5, 2, and 10 go into them. And any one of these will rule out it being prime. It will have to be composite. So in short, if you can find any number that divides in evenly into a number besides one and that number itself, it has to be composite. Okay, I want you to take the numbers 2 through 10 and I want you to put them in this uh, Carroll diagram. So for example, let's start with the number 2. Is 2 even? Yes. Now, is it prime or is it composite? It's prime, so it's going to go here. Now I want you to check 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So pause the recording and fill out this table. Okay. I'm just going to uncover everything here. All right. 2 is prime. We know that. Let's try 3. Well, 3 is odd. The only thing that divides into 3 is 1 and 3, so that makes it prime. 4 is even. The factors of 4 are 1 and 4, but also 2, so that makes it composite. Now, 5 is odd. The only numbers that go into it are 1 and 5, so that makes it prime. 6 is even. 1 and 6 go in, but also 2 and 3, so that makes it composite. 7, odd, but only numbers that go into 7 are 1 and 7, so that makes it prime. 8, the numbers 1 and 8 go in, but also 2 and 4, so that means it's composite. What about 9? Nine? 9 is odd. So 9 is composite because 3 also goes into it. Now this brings up a very interesting thing you have to remember. Do not think that just because a number is odd that it's always prime. That is not the case. 9 is odd and it's composite. 15 is odd, it's composite. 21 is odd and it is also composite. Okay. And the last one on our list here is a 10. 10 is even, which means 2 goes into it, which means 1 and 10 are factors, and 2, that makes it composite. All right, if you have any troubles, go over the whole lesson again, watch it, and uh, complete your assignment. And if you have trouble, come in and talk to me, and we will see you in the next lesson.